Welcome back, Red Spotter, Adventure in the Red Spotlight podcast. I'm your host today, Alexis J. Soto, joined by Ms. Alexis Moreno. We're so very thankful to be joining you guys. <laughs> First off the top, we want to say that uh, we hope you had a wonderful holiday Thanksgiving. If you were celebrating it, of course, uh, we hope you had a safe and careful and socially distanced. And if not, you should get tested for COVID. You should, because if you haven't noticed, 3,000 people died as of, as of the date of this recording for COVID in one day. So, and that's a new record. And 275,000 people are dead. And yes, there's a vaccine coming later this month, but that's not a cure. So go get tested. Wear a mask, please. As a reminder, we're living in a pandemic. God. Anyway, uh, we hope you had a fun <laughs> holiday. Uh, this is episode 280. I'm joined by Alexis. We're going to discuss some, a little breaking news with the industry that we cover with movies. And then we'll also talk about some other stuff, including Ahsoka Tano's live action debut on The Mandalorian, how we spent our holiday and what we're looking forward to this month. And the big story, obviously, is Warner Media making a big shebang saying that its entire 2021 film schedule will now be simultaneously dropping on HBO Max as well as theaters hmm. and the entire industry as long as what the rest of us are shooketh because that's not <laughs> something we saw coming. We saw a little bit of it coming yeah, but not the whole thing not coming. The so thing. We're, uh, we're trying to... This, this is news that broke as of the date of this recording. I believe it's... 3rd of December today? Mm -hmm. It came uh, out today. And so, <laughs> that's right. Uh, when this episode drops, it will be the Sunday of this week. So uh, in case you weren't aware, we pre-record obviously a few days in advance to get make sure the episode is recorded and edited in time. I had hoped to have had more of our panel on here. Unfortunately, we've had some scheduling conflicts as of late, which in turn caused us to not have a show last week. Uh, we decided to take the week off considering it was a holiday and there wasn't much to discuss however um there is the pending guillermo del toro series that we only have just released one installment of uh peter is currently in some kind of a wackadoo makeover renovation house edition out of some sort he'll come back and explain what it is but at the moment he is indisposed and cannot be recording but he tells me that uh we're going to get back on it really soon. And when that comes back, I, I do want to, you know, tease some stuff. We have the remaining installments of the Del Toro series. The next episode, we'll be discussing Hellboy, Hellboy 2, Blade 2, and Pacific Rim. And the last one will be Mimic, Crimson Peak, and The Shape of Water. Um, Very excited to finish that series because there's so much I want to say about Del Toro and how much I've just fallen in love with him as a filmmaker. He's an amazing treasure and I want to really get into that. As well as new material that's going to be coming this month. Obviously, if you're following the film scene this Friday on Netflix, or maybe actually Thursday, uh, the new David Fincher movie, Mank, uh, which is considered to be a big contender for the Academy Awards for Best Picture, is coming out. So <laughs> we're going to be talking about that movie, obviously. Uh, Peter also saw the A24 documentary Boys State, which is a... Really interesting uh, documentary of an experiment of that's been going on for, I think, three quarters of a century now. Dang. Sponsored by the American Legion. Um, I have more details on it. So we have a lot of content. And also, Fantasy Fair. That's a podcast. That's our sister podcast. And Alexis and I are on it, obviously, with Kyle Lyra. Uh, episodes every week. And recently, we've been doing Muppet Month which we actually have been having a wonderful time recording. Mm -hmm. We've, uh, by the time this recording is up, there should be two episodes at least up on there with the Muppet movie and also the Great Muppet Caper and Muppets Take Manhattan. And we'll also be reviewing the 2011 Muppet movie and Muppets Most Wanted. Um, and it's fun. Uh, for Alexis and I, uh, some of these movies we're seeing, or in, in some cases, all of these movies we're seeing for the very yeah. first time. So <laughs> it is uh, really fun. And Kyle apparently is a lifelong Muppet diehard. And uh, I'm sure you'll listen. You'll you'll get that from the in intros uh, oh every week. 
Honestly, I haven't even heard like the first podcast they did or like the first. <laughs> I'm kind of scared. <laughs> If you know Kaya Lyra, it is nothing surprising in the least whatsoever. Yes. So I'm just, I'm, I'm like happy that he's like super excited about this though. Hey, somebody has to be right. Um, and since there is no James Bond happening anytime soon, so I guess he needs something to do. Um, but yeah, we'll be recording uh, here on Red Spotlight. Uh, I have many hopes and wishes as I do for end of the year material. Now, granted, my track record with what I would like to do for an end of the year show has never really worked out. Um, I'm hoping to put something exciting together. I'm hoping to have the time in these next four weeks to not only cover the programs that we have left to that were promised, but as well as new movies that may be coming out. Like, um, I'm sure this month we're going to be getting a new movie, uh, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, which is Chadwick Boseman's final movie mm -hmm. on Netflix, which is also uh, being seen as a big Oscar contender as well. So there's a lot of stuff I want to get to. Uh, Does hoping... Wonder Woman come out tomorrow? Yes. Oh, no, not tomorrow. No, 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 no. No. Wonder Woman 1984. Uh, that's right. That's at, toward the end of the month. And, it comes out oh. on Christmas Day. Christmas Day, and then also Soul comes out on Disney Plus on Christmas Day. So there's a lot of stuff that's and, and kind of like the story that we're we'll, we'll, we'll be starting off with. It it's happening at, at a mile a minute. It Things is. are changing so fast. Things are coming at us so fast. And so, um, I'm not gonna make any promises uh, for what we can deliver for the end of the month because oftentimes things get in the way. And things happen, but I am hopeful that we have something special at least planned uh, for a New Year's Eve podcast that will drop or something. I really am, you know, to to close out this bitch of a year because uh, it really has been the worst. Um, and then also, uh, and this is not something I think we'll get to in December because so much we have going on, but maybe in January. I'm hoping in January, Alexis and I are going to be doing our next television segment series with The Crown, which you can yeah. see on Netflix. We've done and we've done basically if you've listened to our show this year in the absence of movies, although that may not be a problem <laughs> in 2021, but in the absence of movies, we've really done a lot of uh, I think the most dedicated coverage we've done it like covering television shows old and new mm -hmm. um we just finished doing the good place with uh, peter martinez and with david francisco and so uh a lot of wonderful content both on the big and small screen and because of the pandemic it would seem that for the time being most if not all of our content will be on our television home but that may not necessarily be a bad thing. I think television is a beautiful medium. And in many ways, as we will mention, I feel in our end of the year show, um, television has been that, that friend that came back to us this year because <laughs> really all of our friends kicked us out. Um, <laughs> at least that's how it feels like. Um, so that's our show today. This is 280. Um, I'm not necessarily married to this title, but I, I can't help myself. I'm going to call this episode Christopher Nolan Killed Cinema. Uh, I'm dedicating this episode in his name. So, oh, that's, that's nice. <laughs> so yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get into the story in a bit. I just want to start off with um, Alexis. How are you doing? How have you been? I've actually been extremely busy. And I don't see it as a bad thing. It feels good, but I am tired. <laughs> uh, so I decided to give myself or put myself through torture and add another job to my day. Uh, still doing oh. school. And also, what? my main job is a full-time job. Adding a second job, school, doing this. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it seems as if you have, although 
it's not too much of a surprise. You had been telegraphing for some weeks that this is your intention. Yeah. But look, I, I think there you feel good knowing that you do a, a good long day's work. You feel tired, you feel exhausted, but considering how let's say I feel you like were I back, ja- I crammed one whole year in these last two, three months. <laughs> Um, but I don't know. I feel like I was definitely scared, like, when I was kind of planning everything, because I've been thinking about this since, like, August, like, Mm -hmm. beginning of August, um, and it finally happened, like, mid-October, um, but I was definitely scared, but I feel like I'm doing, I'm doing good. Like I said, I am tired, but I don't know, like, it kind of, everything's been working out, um, both jobs I think that I'm doing good you know I feel like I've told you before like I started this new job like my main full-time job uh in July and it's been really hard to like learn my the way of how everything is done because it's something completely new and completely different that I've done before uh but now I'm actually training two new people (laughs) so (laughs) You mentioned uh, July, and I just thought to myself, we're in December now. Mm -hmm. What happened? (laughs) Like, it's so strange. July, I, like, blocked July out of my head because that was such a horrible month for me. Mm -hmm. (laughs) The irony is, of course, Hamilton came out that month. I know. It's fine, though. No, this is this has been such a strange year. I mean, need, needless to say, obviously, right? No need to undersell it. It's been a strange year in, in many ways, but also just the way time moves mm-hmm. has been so weird this year. I, I know March lasted like six months. I at least that's yeah. the way it felt like. And then like we're not just like just speeding through it. I know no there was this one week in November that lasted like a million years. <laughs> It yeah. was uh, the first week in November. Yeah. And then they threw in a damn time change with the election and then the elongated election results. And it's like... God, November been... was so strange. Like, Wasn't it? Yeah. Because it felt like it went by so fast. But in the moment, it felt like it took years. Honestly, yeah. 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 It, it, it's It's been rather... Uh, I don't know. I I had a very unpleasant November (laughs) uh, for a lot of reasons. Um, But uh, I'm I am just of the mood where let's just embrace uh, this last month. And look, we've been talking so much this year about, you know, bad news and sad news. And at the top of the show, I just mentioned even more people that died. Um there is some good news on the horizon. The top story doesn't indicate it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but there is some good news in the sense that we're going to be... This isn't the end. Uh, this is the beginning of the end, I feel. Where mm-hmm. uh, the process for getting this vaccine distributed will be laborious and it will take time. Um. In the meantime, I it doesn't seem as if people any longer are following any COVID regulations. I know California is about to shut down uh, mm-hmm. for a three-week period because, if you can believe, just about everywhere in the state, capacity for ICUs are below 15% or are about to hit below 15%. That means the space that ICUs have left mm-hmm. is now going to be below 15%. That is a no, catastrophe. It's been- it's been crazy. Um, it feels like we're in March all over again. Only worse. Oh yeah, because <laughs> it's like March <laughs> times two. Yeah. But it's crazy, and like I don't know. Like, there's a lot of things that like go through my mind when you know they say lockdown because I don't think that people can survive another lockdown because it feels like this whole year has been a lockdown and nobody has helped 
Yes. Yeah. I saw somebody tweeted that um, they gave us a $1,200 check back in March that was supposed to last us through this whole COVID thing, which now is about $43 a day. Or 43 cents. It could be either or. But either way, like... <laughs> Forty-three dollars might as well be forty-three cents for yeah. how useless that is. Yeah. Now it is. It is a national embarrassment that we will never let them live down. This country failed big time in many ways. It is a national embarrassment for how it's handled COVID. The people, mind you, bear the brunt for acting irresponsibly for why this pandemic has gone as long as it did. But it is the job of the federal government to provide mm-hmm. assistance for businesses and for people all over the country. And there were many examples all over the world of how it was, how bill payments were suspended, how all of their literal dues were covered as long as they stayed in their homes. And guess what happened with those countries? In many of those cases, they overcame it and they're partying in the streets now. I know. New Zealand literally has had no new COVID cases or no new COVID deaths. We are one of the only countries that like should not and cannot spend christmas with their families while other people or other countries like they're like india or like some place just had like a a a festival a music festival because yeah they have like no covid cases while we're like (laughs) we're just like fuck it (laughs) it sucks The president of the United States has obviously not given a shit about this pandemic all year long, and even worse so after he lost the election. He's still bitching every day about how he lost the election. Anything that he like has he said anything after he was like, No, I lost. Well, air quote, I lost. He's still fighting the results. I literally He's still fighting the results every single day. He's not doing anything about COVID. So that's where we are. That's where we are. We have a complete national embarrassment of a government. We have no leadership. That's the problem, which is why, in many ways, thank God he's fired. The sooner we be- we can get his ass out of here, then we can get somebody who, at the very least, can finish this and move mm-hmm. on. That's all we want. We just want to go back. I'm tired. I'm literally tired of all of this. I've been in my home since March. <laughs> oh my god oh my god anyway um do you have anything else <laughs> how was your thanksgiving it was nice uh we made a big old dinner for four people um which we realized it was a lot of food for four people and even my dad was like, we should, like, go and, like, give some of this food away because <laughs> it's too much. But then I was like, are they even doing that? Like, can we even do that? Like, because COVID? Like, I don't know. Uh, But we gave it to, like, friends and stuff that they didn't, like, have dinner or anything. Stuff mm-hmm. like that. Um, But it was just, it was nice. It's, my family kind of went through, like, a lot of shit this year so it was like nice to kind of sit down and like just be like the four of us and stuff it's been a freaking roller coaster of a year (laughs) i think a lot of us can say the same um yeah it was abnormal i didn't go visit any of my extended family because no shit Mm -hmm. um Yeah, yeah. I had, uh, yeah, overall, it was decent. Uh, it was nice to have the family together, had good food. Um, just about that, yeah. No, I've, I've mainly just been occupying my time with online shopping. Um, again. <laughs> again. <laughs> but, but this I time, know, same, it's for though. the holidays, you know? <laughs> this time, there's an excuse This time to it's for do. other people. Like <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Although, I will say... I will say this, um, in looking for things to buy other people, I inevitably end up getting but- <laughs> stuff for myself. <laughs> That's so funny. It's cool. Yeah. 
I know. <laughs> Every time I like, I buy something like, like I just bought uh, a couple of friends some stuff, and I'm like, oh, one for them, one for me. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's exactly how I feel. And you're trying to feel good about yourself, but also it's like, hey, I want to buy myself some shit too. You know? <laughs> I could use this. Might as well. Um, but yeah, I, it's nice though. I do like shopping for other people too, especially, um, only in the cases where it's really hard though, to figure out what the hell to get them. Um, and it is a little bit more limiting this year because, um, normally I would just physically go to places and get Mm -hmm. them myself, but that's fucking dangerous. (laughs) So Mm. I'm not going to do that. Like this year I had, I usually go every like black friday to best buy to get some new blu-rays mm-hmm. uh or some other stuff that they have there um was not doing that um so i did uh i i made my uh purchases online and i did the curbside pickup yeah i for best buy well you the got a lot is- of blu-rays you showed me the other day at yes, best buy I did. you guys went crazy we, we just buy them online also because i feel like our best buy like has sometimes limited amount of items mm. um so we buy online the only thing i did go in store for was i got a new phone <laughs> yeah um but that was because i just like had questions and i was like okay i don't know what to do <laughs> but um other than that yeah, I would just, we just buy online and get it delivered. Because also, like, I mean, I'm, like, not home most of the time because I'm at work. Um, But, like, our, everything, any store around, like, the area that we live is either 20 minutes one way or 20 minutes the opposite way. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, we're, like, in the middle of, like, nowhere. But, like, if you go a little bit further out, everything is there. <laughs> So it, damn, that's a long time. Yeah. So if you, even if you're gonna go on one way or the other, it's like four, that's almost an hour. Uh huh. So like, like if you want to go to like Target, Target and Walmart at the same time, um, Walmart is on one side, <laughs> and then Target is on the opposite side. So that's like half an hour, thirty five minute drive from one place to the other place. That is gas. Yeah. That seems annoying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that that yeah, that that seems like a lot. Um but yeah, yeah. Um Also like I don't know. I I feel like this didn't used to affect me all that much up until recently, but I really for whatever reason did not need daylight savings uh this year. It is so annoying. It is annoying that like when it's like five in the evening, it looks like it's like t- 12 at night. Mm-hmm. Especially like, I don't know if you're still doing this, but at least with me, like when I was at home, like beginning of the year, um, I would wake up like at 11, 12, 1, 2 p.m. And so you have like, three hours maybe of daylight and like that's it like you're you're done that's part of the reason why this isn't working for me (laughs) because there's next to no sun ever and it literally makes my existence feel like an actual vampires (laughs) that sucks yeah what are you gonna do oh boy should we get to this story Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> this is crazy. Um, a little bit of a preamble. So much of our shows this year have been dedicated to covering the changing industry when it comes to movies and the movie making business. And we've been here all year long through it all from the initial delays to the delays again and again and again to the failed um uh campaigns the failed campaign of Mulan on Premier Access of Disney Plus nobody 
paid the money, it seems like. Uh, and then also the disastrous campaign on the uh, part of Christopher Nolan to get movie theaters back up and running. If there was a verdict, it clearly was a fucking failure of a campaign. Because as of the recording of this podcast, based on what I've read, more than 60% of movie theaters are now closed. Were in the reopening, which I believe was late August, early September, um, 75% were open. Now more than 60 are closed. If I don't know how you can interpret that other than a miserable failure. Maybe there was a slight uptick for the Thanksgiving weekend, but not much of anything. So the point is, no one is going to the movies. Absolutely no. no one is going to the movies. Nor they should have, obviously, but that experiment has long since been proclaimed dead. And in that failure, we've seen the next phase of delays, which occurred, I believe, all throughout October, which was... Basically, all of the other movies that were left for this year that still were not moved were pushed all the way into 2021. All mm -hmm. of the studios just like, you know what? This shit's not happening. Um, and then things got worse. The pandemic kept getting worse. And it looked as if, um, which was the precursor to this decision that some select blockbusters were going to be used by certain companies and studios to supercharge their streaming services because that's the only thing that's working for them in this business. It is certainly in the case of Disney. Disney made this big announcement, I think about a month ago, about doing this like shakeup of prioritizing everything to Disney Plus for the moment. And it seemed as if everybody else followed suit with that. Because um, when there was the announcement of Disney Plus getting Soul, the next uh, Pete Doctor Pixar film, on Christmas Day. And then soon after that, uh, Warner Media made the announcement that Wonder Woman 1984 was going to be also dropping on HBO Max on Christmas Day with a simultaneous run in theaters. Uh, and that was a big, big move on the part and a smart move on the part of HBO. I mean, of Warner to really get HBO Max because last time we talked about uh, the official numbers that were out there, HBO Max hadn't even had anywhere. It had like, what, 5 million subscribers. That's like in the, the first three months. Supposedly, last I checked, recent figures had it closer to 20 million subscribers. I don't know if I want to believe that because some include HBO with HBO Max mm -hmm. and that's... It's it's a hard thing to figure out. But needless to say, in the absence of theaters being viable, the next best thing is for the streamers to be as successful as possible for the companies to net as much profit as possible, which is why we're seeing, we saw those moves in particular with Saul and Wonder Woman 84. In recent days... We had seen rumors of Godzilla versus Kong being in consideration for uh, going to HBO Max. And that was the last we heard of it. When we woke up this morning, um, shattering news <laughs> that... Uh, you mean when you woke up this morning? <laughs> when I woke up this morning... Um, some people wake up later, okay? That's not good. <laughs> Um, news that is, if I'm being entirely honest, is still something that I'm not entirely sure how I feel about. And that's not usually the case with these stories. I usually am very immediate in what I think of something. And this move is very weird in the sense that uh, of how I feel about it. I don't mean to suggest that it's weird from a, I think, business perspective. It makes all the sense. Yeah. Until you get into some particulars about how much money you're actually lighting on fire here for the streaming service. It's a lot mm -hmm. of different things, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I want to get to 
Let me go ahead and read this first, Alexis, and then I'm going to go ahead and start with you and give your thoughts, okay? That way I uh, have the official uh, story here from Variety. That way people are caught up with what I've been babbling on about. Warner Brothers to debut entire 2021 film slate on HBO Max and in theaters. When WB announced that Wonder Woman 1984 would land on the streaming service HBO Max on Christmas... The same time it debuts in theaters, many expected it to be an isolated experiment in response to an unprecedented pandemic. Instead, the studio will deploy a similar release strategy for the next 12 months. In a surprising break from industry standards, WB's entire 2021 slate, a list of films that includes The Matrix 4, Denis Villeneuve's Dune remake, Lin-Manuel Miranda's musical adaptation of In the Heights and The Suicide Squad will debut on both HBO Max and in theaters on their respective release dates. The shocking move to release movies day and date underscores the crisis facing movie theaters and the rising importance of streaming services in the wake of a global health crisis that's decimated the film exhibition community. Other films like this would include Godzilla vs. Kong, Space Jam 2, Tom and Jerry, The Conjuring 3, Mortal Kombat. All of these movies fit the definition of blockbusters that are kind of why there's a movie making business in the first place. WB also referred to this as a, and I quote, unique one year plan. There have been some skepticism on the part of critics about how honest that comment was we'll get into that as well and then uh wb also did this although it sounds one way at first and then it ends in a different way once i read the whole paragraph here to get theaters on board and allow warners to break its theatrical contract for wonder woman 1984 the studio is giving cinemas a more generous cut of ticket sales Their theater chains are receiving as much as 60% of revenues, but sources say that won't be the case for upcoming releases. That would indicate (laughs) what they just decided with the entirety of 2021, having a simultaneous run on HBO Max and on and in theaters. Alexis, what's going through your mind? Well, <laughs> I am not going to lie. I like I honestly really did get emotional like reading that. Like I almost cried and I was at work. <laughs> um I just think I don't know cuz like going to the movies I think is such a huge part of our lives and a lot of people's lives. And, you know, like some of like my best like memories are going to the movies with my friends. Um, I don't know, like it's to be in a place where like that might not be possible soon like, well, it's not possible right now. I mean, in, in a way, I mean, it kind of is, but yeah. we haven't had the. But like for it to completely go away, you know what I yeah. mean? Um, I don't like. I don't like that. <laughs> um, but like, I I also understand why this is happening. Um, and like, you know, again, yeah, like how you said, like from a business standpoint. Yeah, like they they had to do something cuz literally delaying a whole year of you know what I mean? Like that's that's a lot and I don't know. I'm still kind of confused of how this is going to be better um because I even though the movie was not a good movie I am, like, fully 100% with what Disney did with Mulan. The Premier Access, even yeah. though it wasn't really a big of a success as they hoped? Um, I think that that, sh- that should have worked. I think that it should have at least worked a lot better than it did because um, maybe, you know, maybe lower the price a little bit. Um, 
but I don't know. I feel like that was like kind of like the best way to go to make some of the money back because also like I think what like people don't um like obviously like it doesn't go through their heads like the mo- the movie the money that movies make like is not fully just going to like the company you know like it's going to the people who make the movies you know and that's to me like to cuz that's kind of like the industry that I want to be in you know someday right and like I feel for those people that like might not <laughs> get as much money you know, for doing the hard work and being, you know, as creative as they possibly could to make these movies possible for us. Like, I feel like, I don't know. I just, I'm scared for them. <laughs> Is what I'm trying to it's, say. It, obviously, you know, it, it's been a difficult year. Um, it's been a difficult time, an era uh, for people who work in this industry. Uh, and in many cases, even in the best of times, they are not owed yeah. what, they are, what they deserve. Yeah. Um. Even how we discuss it in the media sometimes. Um, a lot of uh, regular, normal working people are not necessarily given, even when they're fired. And there are big, like, these big numbers and headlines, not much is made of it. I, I, one thing, I had to comment on this because it just kind of blew me away. So today there was this headline about, about it's a bloodbath. Uh, uh, like Disney fired so many executive, like these senior executive people at the company. Mm-hmm. Why wasn't that? It's a bloodbath description used with the twenty eight thousand working yeah. people that were laid off. Yeah, I don't care if a hundred executives get laid off. <laughs> I I don't. They're fine. They have more than enough wealth to live off for the rest of their lives and their heirs as well. I don't give a shit if they lost their job. I don't. Not compared to the 28,000 people who did lose their jobs, who are going to be struggling to make ends meet Mm -hmm. or to do whatever they could, right? To have some kind of a living. And so there is just another frustration of how overlooked and how uh, baffling the coverage the media decides to put these labels on oh my god it's a bloodbath these wonderful rich pompous executives are (laughs) laid off no it's not it's not in fact they should have been the very first to have gotten laid off if you ask me but here we are being the very last of them and it's happening in every company it's happening in every industry Mm -hmm. people are just you can't support this any longer people are losing their jobs left and right it's a pandemic it's a we're in a national crisis the economy is about to crash it's if it not already has it's it's a bad bad time and we've been saying all year long that even in the best of circumstances movie theaters were just barely getting by as it was but this it has been one death now after the other Mm -hmm. and you're right it is one does get a little emotional when reading this because And I would dare to say that uh, among our group of friends, this was our past time. This was, in all intents and purposes, what we would do when we would go out. I would venture to say that amongst us and our group of friends, whether it would be together or individually or what it would ever be the case we would go to the movies at least once a week or yeah. once every other week once a month like yeah. i don't know i just it's just some something that like now that it's taken away at least f- kind of for the meantime you realize just how much you actually, you know, like, did that. And Mm -hmm. literally, I don't do anything else. Like, (laughs) yeah, I kind of realize just, like, how kind of sad my life is because that's all I did, like, truthfully. And I'm not saying it, like, in a bad way. I love it. Like, I love going and 
you know, I love I love watching movies and Mm -hmm. going in and getting that full like movie theater experience. Like it means so much. And again, like the possibility of that fully, fully 100% being taken away from me and like the possibility of that happening, like it sucks. Yeah. And we're not going to know exactly to what, you know, the full extent of this is going to be as far as like theaters. What I would suspect would happen in the coming months would be, certain chains go under and the theaters or, or maybe it's bought by some other subsidiary, which, you know, uh, if you're asking how we're in this situation with WB making the decision that it was, it was because of a merger, Warner media that now owns Warner brother movie studios overruled them and made this decision because they can do that now. And so, yay, mergers are a good thing. Every which way you strike it. Um, But I would also, you know, I guess my hope would be that this decision was made because as a, as a whole, 2021 might end up being another wash for them as 2020 was. Even with the vaccine that will take several months for it to be distributed, it would have taken some time for mm-hmm. movie going to become attractive again. In fact, I, w- I said to Peter that my expectation was that it wouldn't be until late 2021 where maybe some kind of normalcy would come back and it would be a little bit safer to go ahead and do some of these things. Mm-hmm. But that being the case that would still mean that there are too many movies that are currently have 2021 release dates, but no one, the mass is just not willing to do that. And we are where we are. And I guess my hope would be that with this announcement, I'm not going to say that things are going to go back to the way they were when COVID is finished. I think what, what this means is the theatrical window from when movies go to streaming has been irreparably changed uh, come what may when this pandemic is over. Um, and that will significantly affect the box office. Um, and that is an unfortunate disaster. Thank you, Donald Trump, for that once again. Um, <laughs> literally wrecking everything. Um but I don't, I'm at the moment not concerned in the sense that every, all movie theaters are going to go away because the movies that they make for this business to be profitable, like blockbusters, like Wonder Woman 98 and 1984, Godzilla versus Kong, The Suicide Squad, you can, people somehow don't, they don't, it doesn't click when you say this to them. You can't make those movies for the same amount of money if you're only making movies for streaming because that's how you lose money. Mm-hmm. And don't and, and this should be really I feel discussed more in a lot of the media coverage, but what Warner Brothers is basically doing is they're setting their entire lineup on fire. They're setting up a whole billion, millions of dollars on fire. Basically by I mean, yes, they're losing millions of dollars every day and this is doing to the business has made the business sense makes it's the logic is there obviously for why this is doing the streaming play and it's huge because you're because you're doing this but at the same time you have to acknowledge that this is being done as a sacrifice we can't make any money off in the movies this year we're going to be losing money off these movies that just stay in a shelf all year long so we'll take a bullet we'll take these big names we'll put it on our streaming service and maybe we can make a profit that's going to be will be better for us down the line in a few years from now by making this move right now Mm -hmm. so this isn't by any means um this and i also do i'm saying it's not by any means um a guaranteed success and it also isn't a success, even if it is a success, because there's so much money that you leave on the table. And if theaters do go away, you're not going to get movies the same way that you think you get them right now. 
And I guess my fear is that people just won't care at that point. Yeah. I, uh, the general populace has a callousness and an apathy about them that perplexes me. And something <laughs> tells me that if movie theaters went away, they wouldn't give a damn. Yeah. And some I, have suggested... I mean, I hope... I hope we're wrong. <laughs> but, like, I, I think the same thing. I don't know. I just feel like... Once they lose that inconvenience of having to drive and like go out of the way to like actually be somewhere other than their house like it's it's gonna change yeah and it's really um maddening to me how people view that as an inconvenience (laughs) that was a night out to me yeah, and, literally. <laughs> yeah. So, I also do have to wonder, though. Um, because and this is just something that's been nagging at me. Disney Plus gained so many new subscribers based on their library content, not so much for their original content this year. I think almost 75 million subscribers at this point. Blasting through the roof of their expectations. Um, what happens if these movies are dropped on HBO Max and not that many people subscribe to it? Like, I I'm not convinced that people. Wonder are Woman. Gonna... I think I think Wonder Woman is going to be a big thing for them, but I'm not convinced yeah. that something like Dune mm-hmm. or In the Heights or Tom and Jerry. Yeah. Is going to drive that much traffic. I don't think so either. Um, so that pegs the question is that's where I'm a little bit skeptical about this as well. It's like we I don't necessarily think this option is gonna work out for you either. I mean it's better than nothing. That's true. Mm-hmm. And you're you know, you're throwing whatever you have at the wall, that's true. And you kinda have to at this point. But at the same time, I'm not terribly convinced um, how much HBO Max is going to catch up because of this. Especially when you consider the fact that it is the most expensive service. Most Mm. people don't have it right now for one reason or another. And I can't even watch it. It's not. Yeah, it's not even. It kicks me out. Oh, my God. (laughs) And also it. These movies only stay for 30 days and then they disappear. Wow. And yet at the same time, they'll still be out theatrically where no, but literally no one will be going to a theater when you can just watch it at home. So I. Like, yeah. what is the point? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's just. It's, there's a lot of things. I don't know. Like I said, I mean, I I could be wrong, but I still think that what Disney Plus did was, at least for now, like the best option that there was. Like, in, as in a business perspective. Like, I mm-hmm. understand. I, I understand, you know, people's complaints about it. Like, you know... Maybe it was a little bit too expensive. Um, And during, you know, a pandemic where people are losing their jobs, their lives, like everything, like I I get it, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, But I don't know. Like, (laughs) I just think that was, I don't know. I don't know. I just think that that was a good idea and it should have worked. And I don't know if um, the final verdict is uh, clear with that because based on certain things that we have seen, Alexis, there is some indication to believe that they may try again with Black Widow, the premier access, that Disney may try that again with Disney Plus, Black mm-hmm. Widow, um, but maybe not $30 this time. Yeah, I, I do think that they should lower the price. Maybe that'll work better. Um, 
but I don't know. Maybe we'll see. We'll see what happens, I guess. Yeah. I guess the only question left with this is like, what, what do you think? What's the next, um, what's the next shoe to drop here? Because we know that on the 10th, uh, December 10th, Disney is going to be having a big day or a Disney with their investor call. And they're going to be unveiling uh, their plans for 2021 with Disney plus. And many of us here suspect that it's going to include um, release dates. They might even announce then in there that black widow will be coming to Disney plus. They haven't officially announced it, but I think that's where the expectation is going at this point. And mm-hmm. so, yeah, I think Disney will make some, Big announcements on the 10th. And uh, then here we go again. (laughs) Yep. Well, that's it for that uh, particular topic. Um, Before we go, I guess we have to. Um, Mandalorian Season 2 currently Mm. is airing. uh, Dropping weekly on Disney Plus uh, to mass fanfare. It would seem that part is not in the least surprising considering how the reaction was last year. But something uh, happened. Uh, A notable episode uh, during Thanksgiving week dropped, which included or featured, I should say, the live action debut of Ahsoka Tano, which has been a uh, longstanding character uh, for Star Wars animation uh, for a very long time now. And what I I think we're 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 going to use this time to talk about <laughs> this because you, me, and Peter were very <laughs> confused <Shit. laughs> about the reaction we saw for this episode. Um, so much so that we had to talk to each other because it was crazy. <laughs> we wanted to feel normal. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. So basically, we want to ask you who were as loving Mandalorian as everybody else on the internet. What is it you're seeing that we're not Please, ex- like, ge- like actual genuine question, question. Like, please explain this, because I don't understand. <laughs> and you know what's funny? I actually had a conversation with somebody who like loves the show, um, and I was pointing out my problems with it, and. You know, that I just genuinely, like, don't think that it's, like, as good of a show as people say it is. Um, And she agreed with me. But then she goes, but I still love it. And I'm like, okay. (laughs) Which is fine. I mean, that's... Yeah, like, you can, like, I don't mind that, but... They also didn't explain, like, why. Or, like, I don't know. It's just, it was weird. (laughs) And I feel like that's kind of what everybody's going to be saying. (laughs) It's just so, I mean, we've we've become accustomed to every single week of The Mandalorian. uh, People just, like, slavishly, slavishly like tweeting especially it's mostly on twitter like the reaction has been like over the top like um out of this world like like you would think like um the best thing ever happened because in a lot of these instances a lot of these tweets were characterizing this episode as this is the best star wars since this so this is the best this is exactly what this is star wars at its best or like this is the most amazing moment in star wars I think that was the common consensus, and I don't understand. I don't either. And you thought, like, I, I love Dave Filoni, but man, 
If you thought they were sucking his dick before, this was a full blown orgy. Honestly, like the it, it honestly became kind of creepy how people were like um bowing down and and like singing his praises. And we should say we thought the episode was fine. We had fun. It was cool. But it it seemingly was like people were I, I I don't know it really is the question is I don't know what you're seeing like people were having reactions like Rosario Dawson and Ahsoka Tano is like the next big action female star I it, and they were saying that like wow Ahsoka this and and and, and, me, and meanwhile Alexis and I are looking at it like yeah Ahsoka's cool and all but like this is like easily the most she, boring she's been in anything yes literally like i have seen her do so much this was not even the bare minimum like this is, she's like on a bench she was benched like this is literally what that is <laughs> yeah that's the thing it's like pe people swear there's there's so much to discuss in the episode. There wasn't. Literally everything that happened in this episode, we already knew. Yeah. Like, nothing happened. Like, that's what I don't understand. Like, how can you say that this is the greatest thing when absolutely nothing happened in this episode? Like, even for the Mandalorian's sake, like, the show plot, nothing mm -hmm. happened. Like, he's supposed to... I mean, to you can make the argument that happens every week. <laughs> it's the same thing every week the mandalorian goes to a place he comes across somebody they do a mission and then he's pointed in another direction that happens literally every week <laughs> like i genuinely don't think that they know what they're doing with this show because nothing is happening we're in the same spot that we were at the end of last season. Yeah. And we're... How, how many episodes in this season? Like four? Five, I think. Five. Out like, of eight. <sighs> yeah, we're basically like 60% done with this season. It's... um. You like you don't want to be in a position. I don't want to be in a position where you're like you know um, making people feel bad for liking this. It's just that we all of the things that people are raving about. It's like all right, you want to say Grand Admiral Thrawn's name was mentioned? Okay, <laughs> we knew. We, first of all, we knew he was alive. If you if you consider yourself a Star Wars fan, you knew he was alive. There have been long-standing rumors that there's going to be an animated sequel series to Rebels that will feature Ahsoka and Thrawn, which, and when I took that moment, it very well felt like that's that was a tease for that show. Mm -hmm. Some, and then a lot, too many people think that. Everything that is mentioned, like the Boba Fett cameo or Bo-Katan appearing or this Admiral Thrawn thing, too many people like foolishly believe that that's something that's going to pay off in this show. And we yeah. talked about it months before the season even aired on this show on, on Red Spotlight. Um, that season two, and it's played out exactly this way, was going to be used as a backdoor pilot for many different characters. Mm -hmm. People were saying in the, in the yeah, first episode that when Boba Fett appeared, oh my God, what's Boba Fett going to be a big part of the show? Where is he? <laughs> Where did that go? Um, Ahsoka, look, Rosario Dawson was good. I, it was cool to see that character in live action, mm -hmm. but I struggle to see how you would care about her if you didn't know her before this. Yeah, I think the exact same thing. Like, if I was, if this was my first time watching her, I would be 
questioning everything. Yeah. <laughs> I would be like, who is she? Like, what? Like, I don't know. It's just... <sighs> it's like, like it, it gets me mad because, yeah, like, I don't want to make people feel bad and stuff. But at the same time, you know, people made us feel bad when we talk about Last Jedi, but whatever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I don't know. I just, I I cannot get into this show. And it it gets me more mad than anything because these are things that I don't want. Like... <laughs> And we talked about this during the Clone Wars. Like, we knew that this is the thing that was going to happen. And mm -hmm. I don't know. It's it's too much. And I wish that they would do it tastefully. And I don't think that they're doing that. I think they're literally just dr throwing shit out there. And people are eating it up. And I don't understand why. Well, it just goes back to, I think most people just want... Um... I think a lot of people conflate or they confuse quality uh the, st the quality of a story for how m the number of references and connections it it makes to other things in this extended universe and really when you think about it, a lot of people that's all they really want and in many ways supposedly that's why last jedi wasn't well received by a lot of these hardcore canon freaks because it didn't fit with what supposedly they knew about it um you're right though and i think it was what was it i think it might have been uh god i forget his name um uh a critic from collider that referred it to the mandalorian as star wars porn um and it basically is just that and i guess if if, if this isn't making it very clear there's nothing in this show that makes me feel anything. I don't mm -hmm. particularly feel anything for the main character or any of the characters because they barely are characters. There's no sense yeah. of emotion or adventure in here. The Clone Wars was that. And then some. Because mm -hmm. you had actual characters there that you grew with and you grew to love. And I don't know what um frankly i i i don't see how people find this like, exciting we, we should know who these at least baby yoda and the mandalorian are by this point i literally don't know what's happening with them like i you know he's trying to find somebody to take care of take care of him but like that's literally it Mm -hmm. And yes, they revealed some backstory for him, but it wasn't even, first of all, that backstory was kind of shit because of course they had to, <laughs> had to connect something. Uh, but at the same time, like you truly don't know. And also it feels like they've done this so many times already. Yeah. Like it's the same as, um, what's his name? The guy from Rebels. Ezra? It's the same but different. No, no, no. Kanan? His, yes. And also from the video game. Yeah. Like, this story has already been told. It's just, he, and he, he, he just looks like Yoda. Like, oh, yeah, it's another Jedi that escaped the Clone Wars. Yes. Yeah, it, it was really uninteresting, um... I guess what I liked about it, the white lightsabers looked cool. Yeah. No, like, it looked cool. Oh, incredible. Like, it, yeah, yeah. It was this great. show is beautiful. Yeah. Like, don't get a... I like, think that's the only you know, reason I watch maybe, it. <laughs> yeah, that's literally the only reason. Because, it, yeah, the way that the show looks is amazing, and it's beautiful, and... Yeah, but that... Like, I don't watch things because of that. Like, yeah. I watch them because I want to feel something. And I, and that goes with 
you know, having an actual story, having an actual plot, having real characters that you can connect with. And this show does not have any of that. At all. At all. And apparently we're the only people on earth who feel that way. I remember we were thinking last week, you were literally scrolling on your phone for just one negative opinion on Twitter. <laughs> we were on there for like an hour. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. And we still got, what, three episodes to go? We'll see. Maybe they'll end with a bang. Yeah. Well, that's going to do it for us today. Um, thank you, Alexis, for uh, joining me. Uh, we had a seemed good conversation with some depressing things involved. But then again, that <laughs> usually is what makes a red spotlight entertainment podcast is it not thank you all for listening here reminder that we have our shows every single sunday and sometimes on thursdays as well as all the upcoming projects that we have coming up thank you all stay under our spotlight and we'll see you next week bye bye